mantras of our divine mother our divine mother says every obstacle must disappear in every part of the pain the darkness of the ignorance must be replaced by the divine knowledge with my love and blessing says our divine mother about words of our divine mother in the collective works of our divine mother volume 13 page 27 question what is the divine sweet mother what is the divine says the child for the sa divine mother says the divine is what you adore in sure in the how beautiful is the day when one can offer one's devotion to shri aurobindo you must feel that shri aurobindo is looking at you it is not a question of disobedience i know nothing about your additions to the life sketch of the sources from which they were taken my point of view is this that anything written by a sadhak about shri aurobindo which brings him down to an ordinary level and admits the reader to a sort of gossiping familiarity with him is an unfaithfulness to him and his work good intentions are not sufficient it is necessary that this should be understood by everybody our divine mother says Sri Aurobindo says it is impossible for him to take up the political action and enter the political field which would involve a sacrifice of his spiritual work his spiritual help is given to the country and individually to all those who aspire for it he is ready to continue this help even to increase if it is necessary but he is convinced that written messages alone are not sufficient to have a permanent effect or even sufficiently wide effect remembrance of shri aurobindo let us make an effort to realize the ideal of life that he has marked out for us words of our lord shri aurobindo from the collective works of our lord shri aurobindo book lights on yoga page 27 topic surrender continuation our lord shri aurobindo says then only can the psychic being fully open when the sadhak has got rid of the mixture of vital motives with his sadhana and is capable of a simple and sincere self offering to the mother if there is any kind of egoistic turn or insincerity of motive if the yoga is done under a pressure of vital demands or partially or wholly to satisfy some spiritual or other ambition pride vanity or seeking after power position or influence over others or with any push towards satisfying any vital desire with the help of the yogic force 
then the psychic cannot open or opens only partially or only at times and then shuts again because it is weaned by the vital activities. The psychic fire faints in the strangling vital smoke. Also, if the mind takes the leading part in the yoga and puts the inner soul in the background, or if the bhakti or the movements of the sadhana take more of a vital than of a psychic form, there is the same inability. Purity, simple sincerity and the capacity of an unegoistic, unmixed self-offering without pretension or demand are the conditions of an entire opening of the psychic being, says our Lord Sri Aurobindo. It is no part of this integral yoga to dry up the heart, but the emotions must be turned towards the divine. There may be short periods in which the heart is quiescent, turned away from the ordinary feelings and waiting for the inflow from above, but such states are not states of dryness but of silence and peace. The heart in this integral yoga should in fact be the main center of concentration until the consciousness rises above. All attachment is an hindrance to the sadhana. Good will you should have for all, psychic kindness for all, but no vital attachment. <laughs> says the love of the sadhak should be for the divine it is only when he has that fully that he can love others in the right way there is no reason why one should not receive through the thinking mind as one receives through the vital the emotional and the body the thinking mind is capable as capable of receiving as these are and since it has to be transformed as well as the rest it must be trained to receive otherwise no transformation of it could take place it is the ordinary unenlightened activity of the intellect that is an obstacle to spiritual experience just as the ordinary unregenerated activity of the vital or the obscure stupidity, obstructive consciousness of the body is an obstacle. What the sadhak has to be specially warned against in the wrong processes of the intellect is, first, any mistaking of mental ideas and impressions or intellectual conclusions for realization. Secondly, the restless activity of the mere mind which disturbs the spontaneous accuracy of psychic and spiritual experience and gives no room for the descent of the true illuminating knowledge or else deforms it as soon as it touches or even before it fully touches the human mental plane. 
there are also of course the usual vices of the intellect it's leaning towards sterile doubt instead of luminous reception and calm enlightened discrimination it's arrogance claiming to judge things that are beyond it unknown to it too deep for it by standards drawn from its own limited experience its attempts to explain the supraphysical by the physical or its demand for the proof of the higher and occult things by the criteria proper to matter and mind in matter others also too many to enumerate here always it is substituting its own representations and constructions and opinions for the true knowledge but if the intellect is surrendered open quiet receptive there is no reason why it should not be a means of reception of the light or an aid to the experience of spiritual states and to the fullness of an inner change our lord sri aurobindo says the turmoil of mental intellectual activity has also to be silenced like the vital activity of desire in order that the calm and the peace may be complete knowledge has to come but from above in this calm the ordinary mental activities like the ordinary vital activities become surface moments with which the silent inner self is not connected it is the liberation necessary in order that the true knowledge and the true life activity may replace or transform the activity of ignorance Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says the soul the psychic being is in direct touch with the divine truth but it is hidden in man by the mind vital and the physical nature one may practice yoga and get illuminations in the mind and the reason one may conquer power and luxuriate in all kinds of experiences in the vital one may establish even surprising physical siddhis but if the true soul power behind does not manifest let me repeat but if the true soul power behind does not manifest if the psychic nature does not come into the front nothing genuine has been done in this integral yoga the psychic being is that which opens the rest of the nature to the true supramental light and finally to the supreme ananda mind can be opened by itself to its own higher reaches it can still itself and widen into impersonal it may too spiritualize itself in some kind of static liberation or nirvana but the supramental cannot find a sufficient base in the spiritualized mind alone if the inmost soul is awakened if there is a new birth out of the mere mental vital physical into the psychic consciousness then This integral yoga can be done otherwise by the sole power of the mind or any other part it is impossible if there is a refusal of the psychic new birth a refusal to become the child new born from the mother owing to attachment to intellectual knowledge or mental ideas or to some vital desire then there will be a failure in the sadhana says anand shirdan